people think it's a commitment for the kid to do youth sports. Like it's the parents that are committed. I mean, it is a lot of work to be a sports parent. You know, I remembered uh, one of our, one of my original clients was Blake Marchant and his brother, Austin Marchant. And they, they came from Indianola four days a week, you know, and they would come up and do an hour, an hour of catching, pitching or hitting every day. One they'd hit with Mike Mahoney or hit with me or whatever. And then they'd come work out with me for an hour. Like that is such a massive a commitment for, for a parent you know, sure. to do that and then do it for four years. And then he get done with, he was a Blake, Blake works for me now. He's worked for us for like 10 years, but he was like good back. He's a pretty good high school basketball player for Indianola. So then he'd go play basketball and then come up after that. And his dad would go, you know, drive him to, you know, like it's mm-hmm. a ton of round trips and a ton of gas money. And later on thinking about it, he was like, it was cool to get an hour and a half with my son every day mm-hmm. on the, on the road. And he like never thought of it like that before. What's going on, everybody? My name is Ryan Snod. It rhymes with and you're watching and listening to the Rhymes with Odd podcast. Today, we have another amazing guest here. Jake Shandry's in the house. Jake, what's going on, brother? Going well. Good. Going good, yeah. Excited to be here. Absolutely. Today, we're going to be talking about a lot of things like sports, athletics, business. Um, you're involved in a bunch of different businesses throughout, which we'll talk about. But what would you, how do you introduce yourself when like someone says like, oh, who are you? What do you do? Like, what do you typically tell people? It's a pretty loaded question. Uh, depends on what I'm going in, you know, to what I'm, what I'm going in for. We have a whole slew of different things that we do for youth sports. So sometimes we're sometimes I'm trying to get an apparel count for a good size club. Um, so I go in as that sometimes, you know, I'm talking about one of our, ba- like talking about our baseball club we have or one of our baseball clubs that we have. And sometimes I'm meeting with, a um, consulting with a client that is, um, wanting to build a new complex or a city that's wanting to build a new complex. And they want us to do a study. Sometimes I'm going in as a sponsorship rep um, to help, um, you know, land a facility to help them find funding to be able to build a new to build a new complex. And then um, sometimes I'm, it's it's all over the map. You know? Sure. Like it, how it much really time is. do I have to tell you? <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it really is. You know, and kind of where kind of where my roles fell um, between our companies is is business development, going and find new business, and uh, being able to be able to grow from there. Sure. So. Well, I would say you're definitely more of like a, a facilitator of um, youth sports, like mm-hmm. in general, like club sports, because the the ecosystem of that is so different up here in the city. Because I'm from rural Iowa, mm-hmm. and we had maybe like two or three traveling teams, but they're all run by the parents, like. Once those kids would get older, that team might just go away where I feel like you guys have a complete structure of like an on-ramp for a young athlete that wants to really get deep into like baseball, basketball, volleyball, like all the different stuff. It, it's quite yeah. a unique thing, I think. It is. There's, and we've, you know, we've been going around the country now meeting people and there's not a lot of us out there that do it on a day-to-day basis like that. And really it just kind of came down to, um, us being super passionate about what we do and then, um, continuing to find the holes in it. Like, Um, We started uniforms and apparel because doing it because we just needed so many uniforms and apparel and nobody could, nobody could supply it. So it was more of like a need, but then we're also, there's a lot of people in our organization that are passionate about making cool uniforms, having cool hats, you know, making, making everything look, uh, look the part as well as, you know, our, the product, our teams are on the field too. So that's how a lot of our stuff has expanded. And then, you know, like we run a high school baseball tournament series in the fall. There was no such thing as it in, in Iowa. And my business partner, Mike Mahoney's like, he's like, Hey, we got to, you know, if we're going to have a high school club, we got to have other teams to play and we got to have a league to be in and we got to have a tournament series. And there just wasn't much out there, especially in central Iowa. The only thing going on at the time was, um, perfect game, had a league in Cedar Rapids yep. and that was about it. So, but, um, so man, it is it is really all, it is A to Z for you sports, and, and like I said, it, it it grows because we're like all all of us, our teams, so passionate about it. So. Sure. Well, and it's really interesting. I know you and I got connected because we've we've done some videos together for yeah. the for the different clubs and different sports and stuff. So it's interesting. Each one, like I mean, you guys don't just it's not just baseball or basketball. There's mm-hmm. like volleyball. There's all like softball, soccer. Yeah. There's a football program with like teaching people how to like try to get to the combine and all all the different stuff. So. Um, before we talk about like all the stuff you guys do, I think it would be helpful to get a backstory about like how you got brought up, where you grew up and kind of how you got to where you are today. Sure. Um, so when I was, so I'm a, I'm born and raised in Des Moines, grew up on the east side of Des Moines over by Grandview Golf Course. Uh, played, played baseball at Grandview Little League. Always, you know, my parents were way into sports. My dad always had me and mom and dad always had me in something. <laughs> But I was drawn to baseball over everything, over, over all the sports. So, um, and then, so we, we ended up moving to Urbandale. Um, my mom had a painting and wallpaper business. So all of her business was on the West side of Des Moines where all the growth was. So we ended up moving out there, 
And uh, it's also was a really good baseball climate as well for Urban Urbandale was really good back then and the Little League was really good. So it was a it was a pretty good fit for that. But um, and then just so on eighth grade, uh, moved there, graduated from Urbandale, ended up going to playing baseball in college at uh, Kirkwood Community College and then went to Wartburg College and finished out there. And then really from I uh, played baseball and finished out, you know, got my degree. But really, my passion started moving towards strength and conditioning and business. So um, got my degree in exercise sciences from there and then ended up taking an internship with Sportsplex West at the time. And Mike Mahoney, my, my current partner, and Pat Yasinich, my other, my other partner in it, they were literally – they had bought it a couple years ago, but they had just quit their jobs. And this was like, hey, we're going to do this or, or you know, we're going to go back to work. We're gonna, I'm going to go back to teaching Pat. And then, you know, Mike's like, I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be on the side of the road with a, with a spinning arrow, like with a chicken costume, like working for a car wash or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You probably find something better than that, but <laughs> but seriously, it was like you know to kind of do or die for them. You know they were going to go, they were going to give it the run. They'd been, you know, Mike had still been playing, and Pat was still coaching and teaching. So they were like you know working a million hours a week basically to keep it going. Like hey, let's give it a shot. We'll see what happens. So I was, I think their first like full time intern, and then um, they they hired me on after that as a quote unquote full time guy. Like, but I had to earn my keep. It was all straight commission and. We're, you know, working hourly on the random jobs they had and whatnot. But, uh, and then after that, um, I, I got to like push my strength and conditioning stuff, but then also coach, coach ton of baseball. So it was just like a perfect mix for me at the time. And I'm the type of guy that I got to have multiple things. If I'm just like one thing all the time, I start going, I start going crazy. So I need to have multiple outlets. And so that was, it was a really good fit. And then, um, but then I ended up, we ended up building our strength department up pretty good. And our, um, Pat had just started, um, sticks baseball that year too. So, we started ramping it up from there, um, and then they hired me as um, as a general manager as our club, our business started growing, and then um, they offered me partnership probably like 13 years ago, I think, something like that, 14 years ago. Okay. So I um, ended up giving them a couple bucks getting in, and, uh, you know, here we are today. Sure. So, no, I, I love hearing yeah. that story, and we'll kind of dig into it a little bit more. You mentioned you played baseball. Yeah. What, what about baseball drew you to it? Like, what position did you play, and what was the part about the game that made you want to go play in, at the next level in college? Um, well, um, I was I grew up as like a catcher and pitcher, but um, I mean, my knees got bad because I had that Osgood Slaughter stuff. So they moved me to the coach Barton at Urban Dome, moved me to the infield, and then but I basically could you know I could hit. I really liked I really liked hitting. That was what I was good at. Or that's what got me to, you know, got me to college, basically. It was that. Um, but baseball is a – you've probably heard this before. It's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's a romantic sport. It's a, something um, – you have to – it's just like a fine craft. You like fine-tuning everything you're doing. It's not trying to be perfect, but really like it's, you know, similar to golf to where you have to have like a really quality swing. You have to be able to throw – it's just a fine motor skill, you know, and I, I, I really enjoyed that part of it and trying to, trying to make your – you know, trying to make your swing perfect and, you know um, – Chasing, chasing the next home run, um, just all those, you know, all those different things like that. So, would you say you're more like a contact hitter, power hitter? What, how would you categorize? Like, where'd you bat in the lineup? And so I can get a better understanding of uh, what your style was. I bat anywhere from four to seven, somewhere in there. So, uh, they they always call me gap to gap guy. So I hit a lot of doubles. I, I hold the doubles record at Wartburg still. Nice. It's nice, nice to have that. You know, I look back on. They probably could have been triples, but you're just trotting. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, taking my time. Yeah, yeah. I actually ended up. I actually ended up tying it uh, in our conference tournament. And then I hit one more and I got a triple or I would have like held it. I would've, that's why I, I have it tied with somebody. But I ended up getting a triple that day instead of a double. So I didn't, I don't hold the record by myself. But sure. so yeah, gap to gap was my thing. I'd hit a lot of doubles and you know, hit a ball at the park once in a while. So sure. Yeah. I always think too, when I was in you, cause baseball was also my sport. I almost went and played in college um, and just loved it for the brotherhood, but also mm-hmm. like finding my system. And cause I used to, oh, I played third base all the way up until I was in middle school. And then it's like, the infield was completely taken by upperclassmen. So I'm like, the only way I could play was outfield. Mm-hmm. So I became an outfielder. I'm like, I'll, whatever I can do to play. And I was like really fast. So like I'd pinch run like as a freshman and like, I'd do whatever I could to play. But it was interesting because I had, I can't remember what the stat was like my on-base percentage my senior year, but most of them were infield ground balls, but I would beat them out because everyone's lollygagging. And never, usually you trot to first base. You hit an yeah. I'm like, dead sprint as hard as I can get there and I'd beat it out like 50% of the time so that's awesome that was always my favorite thing was like doing the shit that no one wanted to do <laughs> <laughs> if it'll give me playing time like I'll do it you know I'll get the nasty rebounds in basketball like I'll I'll pinch run like I'll do whatever you know so yeah you know I mean you said brotherhood and that is like you know 
probably my favorite thing about about sports in general is just the people that people that it comes with you know everybody's you know if you want to do it at a high level it's everybody's motivated or you know so it's like it's just a, just a great it's a great group of individuals and I thought I was fortunate in a sense to where you know I grew up on the east side of Des Moines so I had like all those east side of Des Moines friends that I you know played sports with and then you go to and I go to Urbandale and I played all I got th- a new group of friends there you know but still c- kept in touch with a lot of those guys then you go to college go to Kirkwood and then I, you're only there for two years which I would have loved to go there for four if it, if, if it was a chance but and then you get a whole new group of guys there that you're friends with. And then you go to war, bring in a whole nother group of guys, friends there, you know, and it's just, that's what it was all. I mean, that is what it's all about. You know, you end up being in a lot of weddings and, you know, just a ton of friends. And now, now that we're all, you know, in our late thirties, we're running into each other at baseball tournaments and, you know, all over the state. It's hilarious. It's, you know, I mean, like one of my good friends in college, he actually runs the Cedar Rapids Reds up in, up in Cedar Rapids. So like me and him are always, you know, from leadership role in the club, you have a lot of you have a lot of good stories, a lot of good stories about parents and whatever else is going on out there, or the new trend, or what are you guys trying to do? How are you winning? You know sure. things like that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So, what was your degree in college when you went to Wartburg? What'd you finish with? Uh, exercise sciences. So okay, yeah. So I was a uh, I was a fitness guy, and then I went into um, my main thing at, at Sportsplex after after that, or when I st- or what, what I wanted it to be, and what I turned it into was. Um, uh, strength, our, we built our strength conditioning department there and we called it the Sportsplex Training Academy. And then we had a group class called uh, ath- uh, Athlete School. Mm-hmm. So they just kids could sign up and just come in there and come in there and train. That The training academy had a few components to it, but it was like personal training was part of it, small group training, and then then, then Athlete School was a group class. And then, sure. well, once I became the general manager, we hired on another guy to kind of run that on a day to day. And then um, D1 Des Moines wanted to move into the space. Mm-hmm. So we ended up selling all of our fitness to them and, um, grab a little ownership on the way, on the way through that acquisition. So. Sure. Yeah. And it's super interesting too. Cause I know like, were you part of the wave where like baseball players, it was taboo to lift cause you'd th- th- screw up your throw or your swing. Like I remember when I was in high school and younger, like people, like not the kids at that time, but the older people, like mm-hmm. college students wouldn't lift cause they were afraid they're going to be able to like script their mechanics or something. Did you ever experience that by mixing the two? You know, there was a, there's a few like things you didn't do. Like the, like the clean and jerk was no one, no one would do that. They, they everybody thought that was the, the cause of Tommy John, but now people are doing it now again. So people laid, laid off a bench cause your chest would get tight, make your arm, you know, you wouldn't be able to throw as well or whatever, but as long as you're stretching and you do it right, you know, so there's, but no, there was strength conditioning was ripping in baseball. When I started, when I started getting into it, it was, it was, you know, med balls, plyos, Olympics lifts was still a big thing, but it was, uh, yeah. I just remember, cause like I said, we were, a lot of my class was in on varsity as freshmen. Cause we had a pretty good uh, class going in and same thing. It was like, we'd be doing plyometrics, like crazy body weight stuff. You'd be like, I mean, I feel like if you're running poles as a, as a pitcher, you're almost in cross country yeah. <laughs> and you're playing baseball because yeah. you're just letting your all the blood go back to your arm. It's like, there's so many things that people don't think about when it comes to baseball too. I just saw some, I was, I just caught like a uh, thing of that Kelsey podcast the other day yep. and he was, he was talking shit about uh, baseball and the poles they ran. They're like, what are these guys doing? Having all these guys run poles. He's like, he's like, that's why I quit baseball. He's like, I'm he's like, I don't even get sweaty playing baseball, let alone do I need to run that much either. Sure. That's why I was like, oh, it's like the only clip I caught, but I was like, yeah, that's a good point. You know, I wonder why these guys are running so much. So. Sure. Sure. Well, and I know baseball is a special part in my heart because it was my, both my stepdad and my dad both love baseball. My stepdad went to state his senior year, played, loved it learned everything. I also went through the BB core bat revolution where yeah, like yeah. I would just hit dingers left and right. And then they give you the stupid BB core bats. And I'm like, I can't even get it out of the freaking infield now. It's yeah, like, they just, that was a tough run. They just yeah. dudded it. And I was like, it was so much fun, you know? Yeah. Um, and then my wife and I first met cause I was playing baseball when we first met. So I was like literally talking to her in the cool. outfield while the game was going on. My coach is chewing my ass. So you got a swi- high school sweethearts? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So nice. she was literally walking by and I'm like, hey, how's it going? Like <laughs> talking to her. They're like throwing Spitting the ball, game. swing, <laughs> miss. I'm sitting there like talking like, snot, what the yeah. hell are you doing? Hey, so, it's part of baseball, man. Yeah, yeah. this is kind of kind of <laughs> fun. Of, Very few yeah. sports you can uh, flirt with a girl while you're also playing it. Yeah, so pull that off. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's always fun. Um, so you mentioned like you came in as, a, as an intern. Mm-hmm. Walk me through kind of what Sportsplex West was when you first came. Because for people that don't know, it's like a large warehouse facility mm-hmm. with indoor turf and a bunch of different um, facilities within it. So what was it when you first came on and what does it evolve to now? No, oh, man, it's a long story, but I don't know how, how much time you have. But when I, when I first, when I first got there, there, 
it was more rental based facility. It was like, you know, you can come in and rent the turf for a hundred bucks an hour or whatever, rent the court for 45 bucks an hour. And now we don't like rent our stuff. <clears throat> we don't rent our stuff at all ever. It's all programmed out by the things that we've, you know, that we've ran between our sticks, baseball club, powerplex, volleyball club, battlers, basketball club, barricade aces, softball club, our tech or soccer program, which is super hot right now. You know, they're just training so many kids and individually and small group soccer stuff. Um, but it was, um, we had homeschool PE, uh, our basketball league was pretty small. Then uh, we had we actually had a really nice soccer league going on. Um, there was a guy that was a partner at a time named Chris McGill and he had built a really nice indoor soccer league there. Um, but it was, um, and the summers were dead. They didn't have hardly anything going on there in the summers. Um, so when I started there, there was like, I almost didn't have anything for me to do as a, as, as an intern. So they were, I was like working on filling this, uh, working on the fall stuff for them and anything else they maybe potentially have maybe the following summer. I don't think they planned on me being around very long, you know, but, um, not a ton. I think I mowed the lawn once, you know, <laughs> like that's not, like literally that's how much they had for me to do. So, and then, you know, now, you know, our baseball club's got, I don't even know, a couple thousand kids in it. We have a club in Iowa City, too. We have the, the Iowa City Sticks, or the Eastern Iowa Sticks, sorry. Um, and then we have, you know, our Central Iowa program here. Our volleyball club's got 220 girls in it a year. But they also have a beach program. It's got another 80 to 100 in it um, in the summers. Um, they also um, have a, like, more of a recreational volleyball program that they do called Evolution. That's got two to 300 girls in that. Um, so it is, it's just like crazy, a crazy amount of growth there, you know, and it's, 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 it's a testament to our people because like all of us are so passionate about it. We're new ideas. You know, the office is always like, Hey, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try this. And that's what you have to do in the, you know, in any business, but sure. Did, did you guys see that big spike? Cause obviously growth has been helpful that way from just doing a, a field rental for hundred bucks an hour, 45, mm -hmm. whatever it is. To now you're doing, like you said, you have all your members that are coming in. Is that how you've grown revenue? Because people are paying like a season fee or something like that. Or is that, is that what's allowed you guys to grow at the scale you have by switching up your pricing model and like how you, how you monetize what you're doing? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I suppose so. Um, because rentals, you're pretty much capped with what you can do, you know? Um, and then, but we also, we also like to be. You know, we have a re we have a way we want things to run. So, us just allow just not allowing is the wrong word, but us just like running to everybody. You know, anybody and everybody that comes into there, you 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 know, you see a lot of things maybe you wouldn't wouldn't want to see out of the way you would run it. Sure. So then, so then for us, we're like, hey, you know, we have we can hire we can hire this girl. She's um, uh, go get her. I think I think she could build a build a volleyball club. You know, and it was ended up being my um, ended up being my cousin Chrissy. And, uh, she just, she just, she just went crazy with it. And then, you know, now it's a premier volleyball club in the state, you know, 10 years later, sure. you know, and it's starting to get recognized nationally and girls going all over to play. They had girls at two girls at girl at Wisconsin, a girl, girls at UNI, um, that Maddie Kubik at, at, uh, Nebraska, who's like an amazing, you know? Sure. Nebraska is so, like a top, top three program. I know we had, um, the best thing to come out of my small town was Michaela Fecky, who played for Nebraska uh, volleyball. She could spike it like 100 miles an hour on people. And there's a video of her on YouTube spiking a chick in the face, knocking her out, and the ball ricochets off her face and tripped a kid going to the <laughs> concession stand for popcorn. Anyway, she's from my town. so That's great. Um, then she went to Nebraska for ride. Like, they won three national titles while she was there. Like, very, very nice. good player. So. Nice. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my, my one tie to, to volleyball that way. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that's volleyball is probably the fastest growing. It's a fast growing women's sport out there right now. It is, it is booking and it's been neat. They, uh, they just made beach and NCAA sport probably like five years ago for volleyball. So now these girls are being able to go to, you know, go to schools and getting double scholarships because they have a beach program and an out and an indoor program. Wow. So it's really nice. So we, that's why we built, built that beach out back way off topic, but you know, that's why we built that beach out back was because, because that came. Mm -hmm. And, um, that came about, so that, that, that beach, that beach court out there, we call extreme beach and it's, uh, it's been, it's been cool. It's a really fun outlet, you know, a really fun outlet for girls in the summer too. So. Sure. Well, and that's a different experience compared to like, I would say most of your other program is geared towards like children, high school call, like that kind of mm -hmm. age, like tw under, under 25, where I feel like the beach volleyball is like good for the adults that can come like have a drink with their friends, like an after yeah. work type of thing, or just a fun 
a different audience, you know? Yeah. We have a, we have adult, adult volleyball leagues on Monday, Wednesday, Sundays, and then it's all, and it's all juniors after that. So it's, you know, um, kids playing volleyball on Tuesdays and Thursdays and then adults Monday, Wednesday, Friday, basically, or and Sundays. So sure. Sure. And then we do some tournament stuff on the weekends too. Um, so yeah. Sure. So talk to me a little bit about the business growth from a, you guys were just in the walkie location. Mm -hmm. Now you guys are, you know, becoming partners, whether it's uh, the sportsman side, but also yeah. like buying other facilities, like what, what's kind of been the growth plan as you guys have gone and gotten into all these other different areas? Like what areas are you guys involved in? Um, like I said before, you know, we're, if, if it's, there's something new sports, we probably, we'll probably do it in some form or fashion, either at a high level or, you know, maybe a low level at this point, but, and a lot more things that we want to do too. But, um, our growth pattern has been, um, a little bit opportunistic. Um, and then we also, we've been growing our programs like our baseball club to where we can't, our facility can't handle all of it. So then in turn, we'll start renting somebody else's space to help them, help them fill it or, um, or a park that just doesn't really have much programming at all. And we'll just go, you know, purchase the field for the night or whatever, or the court and, and run it there. And, um, so that's allowed us to then, you know, go purchase other facilities. And then also they're, they're really hard to run. Sports facilities are hard to run. They very low, very low profit margins. So you gotta be super efficient. You can't have much downtime. Um, gotta, have, you know, gotta keep wages low, just figure it. And just like any business, it's just, you know, uh, it, it's tough. So you get owners calling you and be like, Hey, will you come, come operate our place for us and, you know, get it going. So that's, was, that's how we started sportsman and which is now sportsman's probably, um, our main, our main engine. That's where like our marketing comes out of. That's where our payroll comes out of. That's HR, that's HR central. That's, um, our business development that we have photography going, um, travel, uh, bookkeeping. I mean, you, you name it, anything to run a sports business is what sportsman does now. Sure. So, and that offers more of like a, a consulting service for, mm -hmm. for people all over the country, right? Just like if they, they need help running an efficient business, that's going to better cash flow. They can call you guys and use that. Yep. Um, we have, so, I mean, we have sponsorships in there. We're selling naming rights of new, of new complexes, old complexes, complexes, maybe coming online, maybe not. Um, and I've, I've been seeing the announcements, dude, you guys are killing it on that stuff. Thanks. It's like every week there's a new, like large name person slapping their name on it. I'm like, holy crap, these guys are killing it with the, the naming and licensing rights. Thanks. It's been, it, it's been fun. It's super exciting. You meet a ton of good, ton of cool people through it because it's, it's all decision makers of companies. By the time you get to the end of it, you know, you might get to the, you might get to their, you know, one marketing person makes like, Oh, this sounds a good opportunity. And then next, you know, you're talking, you're having dinner with the CEO to figure out how to make it happen, you know? So it's been uh, a really good connection thing for us. Really good revenue generator too for our complexes because, you know, we need as much money as we can to keep it going and we want to pay our people really well. It's because they're good, you know? And, um, so it's been it's it's been a really nice addition to it to what we can do. Plus, we when we opened up the Norwalk complex, and that's kind of our that's our baby. Right? I mean, that's like the um, that's what we call our showroom down there right now. Mm -hmm. And we we need to be able to generate enough money down there to be able to even afford it, you know, because it's big numbers. And it's you brand know. new construction. I mean, you guys just broke ground on that in the last year, right? Yep, we did. That one's uh, we got the twelve acres of turf. We actually acquired the twenty two acres. It was like man, two years ago probably. Yeah, and then you know through design and development agreements and everything, we got we ended up having twelve acres of turf. Got a really got a really good partner on the turf for us for that. Um, and then um, so we have twelve acres of turf that we call our pod system. And then um, you can you know switch over from baseball to softball to football to basically any any turf sport you can run down there. It's not it's not restricted to the size of the field essentially. And then, um, so that got done about last June and opened fully. Um, the city, the city of Norwalk, ended up getting some land down there too. So they have their rec center going in, um, which is a fifty-five thousand square foot indoor, and they'll have all their rec offices there. Um, and then about four, I think it's four full size basketball courts, walking track that can convert into like uh, uh, eight eight volleyball courts. Holy cow! And nice. a concession stand. And is, then, is that like competitive with you guys? I mean, you guys probably have to work hand in glove with them to yeah. just everyone's trying to do the same thing, right? Like promote yeah. recreation, fitness, sports everywhere. So it is, you know, and we, we spent a lot of time on the contracts, making sure that we weren't competing with each other. It was a big deal. Like it was a big deal for us. We didn't want to cannibalize each other down there. And so we weren't going to build another courts building, obviously. So then, um, when, when they don't, when they don't need it for their rec programs and hopefully we can spill programming over into that for us or start a new basketball league down there or, or whatever. And it, you know, it's obviously a work in progress because it's all new, but, 
essentially the you know the whole the whole agreement between the city and us and um, is not to is not to compete on really anything that we do you know because then our building is finishing up it'll be done probably in July of this year it's fully leased um, we have um, Mullet's restaurants going into there. Okay. Super cool. Um, that one downtown by Principal Park, yeah. you know. There, there's open. one in Ankeny as well. There I've is, eaten yeah. there, so. Yeah, they just opened that one up. Uh, John uh, was perfect time. He was franchising, so uh, me and him had lunch down at Mullet's one day, and next thing you know, and, you know, we're, uh, he signed an lease to, to put a 6,500-square-foot restaurant down in there. And then um, and then next to them, we're opening up a, a golf simulator. Um, a guy named J- Justin Hall, a local dude, he's putting it together. It's got like eight, um, eight, eight golf simulators, indoor putting, you know, big bar. And then we're going to have 14,000 square feet of training uh, between Sportsplex West and D1. So it'll be our new, we're calling it Sportsplex Norwalk right now, but we'll probably end up selling the name of it at some point. <laughs> I got to do, <laughs> do it, dude. <laughs> this is now the mayonnaise headquarters, like sponsored yeah. by Hellman's or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then probably one of our most exciting things down there. Oh, we have, you know, there's a Remax Precision office and then there's a Vivid Life Spa. The Vivid Life Spa is pretty cool. I think we'll partner with them quite a bit on, we haven't figured it out yet, but they're a, they do a lot of IV stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll be neat for some of the athletes that'll be on site to be able to go get juiced up in there, you know, and just after, especially on a hot day on the turf, you know, go in there and get, get, uh, get IV'd up and get rehydrated super fast. Sure. But then the thing we're really excited about is, um, where we put in, um, well, it's not ours, but, um, it's a school called TPH Academy and they're uh, like a boutique IMG Academy where it's like, it's basically a sports school and they're, they tailor their education for, so kids can train during the day. So, you know, obviously there's no PE time, there's no passing periods. It's basically virtual and you're considered a homeschool. So you can still, you can consider a homeschool um, student. So you can still go play for your high school. Um, and you're not, so it's not like you're just, there's gonna be a whole bunch of new teams down there. There's if it's Norwalk as it go, they can go play for the Norwalk baseball team or football team or whatever. And that one is uh, – so they have a 3,000-square-foot classroom down there, and then those kids during the day will come out of their classroom when they're done with their stuff, train with the D1 coaches and train with the Sportsplex coaches so that way maybe they can be home for dinner that night with their family instead of, you know, training somewhere until, you know, 9 o'clock at night. This episode is brought to you by my company, Snod Media Group. Do you like the look and sound of this podcast? Of course you do. It's awesome. There are a ton of benefits to having a podcast, sharing content online, networking with high value people and being a voice in your industry and the list goes on. If your dreams of starting a podcast have quickly turned into nightmares, realizing how much stuff you have to learn and understand to get a published episode out every single week, I'm here to tell you that I can make your dreams come true. As long as those dreams are podcast related. We are now taking rentals for our podcast room here in the Snod Media Group studio. Gone are the days of spending thousands of dollars and setting up all of your professional camera equipment and probably screwing it up, learning how to capture and produce a professional level show, probably screwing it up, learning professional video editing, posting social clips on social media, having a distribution calendar, the whole nine yards. It sounds like a lot because frankly, it is. And let's face it, who has time to do all that stuff anyway? My team and I, that's who. Let us take all of the stress of creating content off of your plate. Simply come in, sit down, record your episode, and leave. A couple days later, you'll have all of your files sent directly to your inbox. It really is that simple. Our quiet studio off the beaten path in Granger, Iowa comes complete with soundproof walls, as you can see here, wood backdrops, as well as a neutral backdrop, and professional lighting. Utilize over $20,000 worth of camera, audio, and lighting equipment with this turnkey space. You can not only use this podcast room, but other parts of our studio to capture social media content or more conversational pieces as well. We have three different packages that can suit your needs and your budget. So let's bring those podcast dreams to reality. For more information about starting your very own podcast here at the studio, visit snodmedia.com slash podcast. Now let's get back to the interview. Sure. Well, it's crazy. Like you talked about starting as an intern, doing mm-hmm. operations, mowing the grass to now yeah. having dinner with these huge CEOs, growing the business, all the stuff. What's been the biggest uh, skill you've had to acquire as you've kind of built this out? Because obviously it's like learning on the fly, but what's yeah. been that biggest skill for you that you've had to get and and understand so you can get to that next level and, and help the business more? That's a good question. Um, I would say, oddly enough, um, being out like accepting the, the failure and taking accountability for that and then learning from it. And then just, uh, you know, I think just doing more conversations and understanding what, what companies are look for and then being like being able to sell our vision and, and sometimes my vision on it, you know, um, 
But I would say like it's it's a the the failure and accountability thing's a, a big one for me, you know, because you in it's I'm trying to think of the, trying to think of the word for it, but um, it's just a man. That's a hard one. It really is, mm-hmm. you know, kind of what you're saying there. Like digging into the 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 skills that you don't have to try to this is what I have to become this new version of me. So then the business can grow. Cause you mentioned like selling the vision, like what is the vision that you typically take to some of these like naming rights people or just a new community like Norwalk of like, Hey, we want to do this thing. Like what, what does that sales pitch look like for you guys and kind of the, the grandiose scheme of what you guys want to build? Well, I, you know, I think going around to going around to some of them, you realize what you don't want to and what you don't like. And so ours was, that's why we spent, we spent so much time on the contracts, like I was saying, and the non-competes inside of it to where, um, as, as we get there, we're like, Hey, we don't want to fight over this. We don't, we want the concessions under one roof. So like when mullets moved in, they, they took over the whole concessions contract for us. So that way we're not, you know, people aren't like selling hot dogs for a dollar less across the parking lot, you know? Mm -hmm. And, but then, um, also like the vision of, um, I was kind of going to get to this a little like earlier, but like we believe in the regional training center. Um, there's some mega complexes out there. But people just kind of stop into those once in a while. You know, it's still the local people are training. You know, the nine-year-old parent doesn't want to drive um, some well, but the most of them just want to have a place down the street where they can go take their kid to baseball practice and have it be and have it be good. So that's how we kind of came up with the Norwalk concept was off of that. It's not, you know, TBK where it's mega, mega complex out in Bettendorf um, or some of the stuff that's going on right now down in Florida and Arizona. There's some big complexes getting built. This is um, – more local feel going to have, going to have, have really good coaches, um, have a, have a, have a city component too. So there's stuff for just, just the citizens to do and not have, you know, um, high end, high end training as well. And that is, um, would be able to plop that on one site, save the parents a bunch of time driving around. Like hopefully we have a dance studio at some point or a gymnastics because then, you know, you got something, a little bit, something for everybody, you know, you can go to one, you can go to one spot, have all the best stuff. Sure. Just save yourself an evening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I think of parents with like three or more kids that are in all different sports, like or activities. Mm-hmm. I know I have a, a cousin of mine that has three kids that are in hockey, and they're in St. Louis, and they all go to three different schools, three different clubs. Yep. She's in the car like six hours a day. It seems like just driving up, pick up, drive off. Mm-hmm. It's like the constant thing. Where if you had like a hub of st- sister can do dance, the brother can do baseball, the other brother can do hockey, and it's like I'll come pick you all up at the same time, and we're in and out. Oh, we can get dinner across the street at Mullets too. It's like. This yep. community feel of exactly. like recreation, fitness, sports, like all of it's in one spot. Because mm-hmm. I've noticed these little like areas pop up around Des Moines, like um, the field house up in Ankeny. Ankeny's mm-hmm. got like the whole bunch of stuff going there. Altoona, there's some stuff going up out there. Um, Ames, obviously you guys have been interested in, in sports Iowa. Is that still sports Iowa or have you just yep. renamed that since nope. taking? Okay. No, we left the same, yeah. Sure. So it's like what what's kind of your vision on competition and how that landscape has changed or is continuing to change um, since things have happened? Well, it's kind of weird because they, they, you do feel like it's a big sports complex boom, and it might be. But, like, we kind of felt that uh, six, seven years ago, there was all these ones that popped up around central Iowa, too. Um, I think – but some of them have failed. Some new ones have started back up. So I don't feel like there's, like, this massive new market going on. There is on the there is on the mega scale around the country. There's a lot of big ones going. And even it's, like, every city wants to, wants to have one of these now. So it is a little bit of a race, but they, they – like, we always say yeah. – the old, the, you know, I hate to knock on the field of dreams thing, but like to build it, you, they will come. It's not the case. Like you got to have good programs to go in there, you know, like if VSA soccer out in Waukee, if they didn't have any programming to go in those, to go in Timberline soccer complex, it would just kind of sit there and for a nice park to look at, you know, but you have, you have VSA soccer who's really good at what they do. Mm-hmm. They put on amazing programs and that place is, that place is packed. You know, sure. the Grimes Flex would sit empty. That's just opening down the road here. If they didn't have sporting soccer, you know, kicking butt in there and central house sports. And so, you know, we have some programming going in there too for PBR baseball tournaments and stuff. And our uh, high school baseball league is going to play there on some Saturdays, you know, like those, like those places sit empty, you know, Norwalk would sit empty if we didn't have all the programming to put in it, you know, so, and those are the engines, you know, like the engine is the actual club is, is bringing, is bringing the people to get better at sports, you know, and have better, you know, just, just better experience, you know, so sure. it's like, you know how this is like, it, it, it's passionate. You're passionate about sports, but like teaches you life lessons too. It's not just like, Hey, I'm going to get drafted and make $30 million a year. This is, Hey, I learned how to fail. Um, I got better at something. I took a step back, but I, but I talked to somebody and I figured out what I was doing wrong. Now you know, 
and then you learn some, you know, you learn leadership skills, finding be if you're a role player or not, you know, like ton of, you know, just a ton of life skills come from that too. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, that's great. I think another question I wanted to ask before we get to our lightning round is kind of the, the fatherhood aspect. So sure. you mentioned you pl- grew up playing ball it was a big part of your life. Um, mm-hmm. now that you've had your own kids, how many kids do you have? I have three. Okay. Boys, girls. I have two girls and a boy. Okay. What's been kind of the crossover from becoming a parent, but also being a business owner and the coach side of it too. Like, are you, are you coaching the kids? Do you not even touch that? And you're like, I'm just going to be dad. But I, it, like, what's kind of the, uh, the relationship there? Well, um, I have a 14 year old daughter. And so she took to soccer. We did softball early and I was like, ah, it's not going to, I can tell it's not going to be her thing. So I didn't, uh, I didn't end up having, I didn't end up coaching her really at all besides like a couple years when she was little. So she really took to soccer. So I've been able to sit back and be dad on that. And I don't know anything about soccer really at all. So it's, the ball. <laughs> it is, it's pretty nice. You know, it is. I sit back and I watch. I don't have a ton of opinions. I get to hear the coaches coach. I learn. I learn from them. Um, and really my only opinion is at the end of the day, I was like, did you work? I can tell if you like worked hard or not, you know, and then, you know, we have those talks and, you know, it's, it's nice to have that separation. Yeah. And my middle one, Brooklyn, she's, uh, she's 11 and she's uh, level level six slash seven gymnastics. So obviously I don't know anything about gymnastics either. Flip faster. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man, it is. That's a crazy sport. It is nuts. You know, if, if it was on the other end and there was, if we were like, Hey, sticks baseball club is now going to pra- going to take your kid out of school at one o'clock and they're going to practice four hours a day, four days a week. People would be like, what the heck are you guys doing? You know, but gymnastics has been like that forever. Seriously. Yeah. It's been like that forever. D- does she train it? Like, cause I know Des Moines is like the hub for gymnastics in the whole country. Like it there's like pretty big, yeah. four or five huge gyms in West Des Moines. I know like Sean Johnson and mm-hmm. all these other pl- huge Olympians have been here. Does she go to some of these huge gyms or does she go somewhere else? Uh, she goes to, uh, it's kind of a newer, a newer, um, emerging one. It's called Emerge. Oh yeah. Yeah. Emerge Academy. Emerge Academy right, yep. right in Grimes. Um, yeah. Spencer's a cool dude. I've met him before. He is. Uh, he's done a, he's done a really good job with that. The boys side of things are, are really good too, but they just got two, they got two really good coaches now. Um, and it's been, it's been an awesome year, especially for my daughter. It's probably her best year of gymnastics yet. And for me, you know, like I said, I kind of sit back and be dad for that and just drive her, drive her wherever. And, uh, this is the first year we're on the road a lot. So I think we've been in many, go to Minneapolis tomorrow in Texas the week before that. Um, we were in Colorado the week before that. Holy cow. Yeah. There's just kind of, kind of all over the place. And, uh, the Colorado was fun too, because we turned a little vacation, did a little skiing for a couple of days after as a family. That was a blast. Um, so but that's, like I said, good to be just dad for that really. And then my, my youngest son, he's way, he's way into baseball. Um, he's baseball wrestling. Basically it's like, likes them all. He's eight, you know, but baseball is his thing. He really likes it. So sure. now I'm coach dad, you know, and. That started out kind of tough, you know, started out really easy and he's listened to everything. And then we had a little, we bumped, you know, we started, we started button heads a little bit a couple of years ago. And, uh, cause he got this thing in his head that, <laughs> cause he's around a lot of like really high level baseball players at Sportsplex, you know, sure. and high level guys. There's a lot of guys have been drafted, played pro out there and, you know, uh, and so he's just like, you, you don't, you play division three baseball. You don't really know. Any, you don't know anything, dad, you know, he's sure. Like, you and you're get, like, he's like, you didn't even go pro. <laughs> yeah. You start but, joke slamming him. We'll see who wins this yeah. fight, son. Yeah. But then for, you know, uh, for, you know, um, he ended up like for uh, my wife ended up actually like straightening him out. It was hilarious. She's like, Hey, your dad, your dad knows his shit. He's been doing this for a long time here. You know, you need to listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, uh, but it's been good. He's been, he's been great. Now we have a, we have, um, our rookies program that we have is, uh, we call it, call it rookies are sevens and eights and, you know, players can literally just sign up for it. There's no tryouts, there's nothing. So we have about 90 kids in that program between seven and eight. And it is, um, our team, like our teams are good. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's awesome. And it's been, it's, it's been fun doing that with him. Cause I've been, I was, I kind of backed out of coaching with this owning things, kids getting into sports. I was like going to miss tons of soccer games and whatnot. So I backed out a little bit, I backed out from coaching and just kind of stepped into more of a leadership role in the business. So it's been nice kind of getting back in, um, seeing all the guys coach at night, you know, when I'm, when I'm helping run, run practices and whatever. And then also, you know, I get to coach my son every day almost, you know, sure. so it's a, uh, outstanding experience that, you know, I'll never forget. Sure. You know, and hopefully he doesn't either. Sure. No, it's super cool. Yeah. I know my, my, like I said, my stepdad, um, had a pretty, pretty good high school run. He loved playing baseball. It was another bonding thing for us, but, um, he, he swore he'd never coach me. Cause he's like, especially younger, like they're going to say, Oh, if, if Ryan's playing, it's because his dad's the coach, yeah. like all that type of stuff. But I had a built in personal trainer coach to like, yep. I'd come home and be like, 
I keep hitting down on the ball and he's like, Oh, okay. Like, so we go in the backyard and work on it. It's like, mm-hmm. sometimes it's almost, it's good, but also bad if your dad's the coach, but then you can't miss a game cause you're in every single practice game. Like you're there, you know, but then yeah. you also gotta, you gotta coach 20 other kids and like help them give them equal time too. So it's hard. Yeah, it is. You know? And then like, I was out, like I was out in Boston, uh, last two days, um, or on, on Monday, no, we left Monday, Tuesday, got back yesterday for some, for some work stuff. And, you know, I, so I had to miss practice and that's weird. You know, like that, I, you know, I, to miss, to miss a practice as a head coach, it just doesn't happen. But, you know, I don't really, sometimes you don't have a choice, but yeah, it's, uh, but then at the same time, you know, he was, I had, we have really good guys to kind of pick up slack for me there. And then, like you said, you know, at, at home, we have a cage in our garage and he's, you know, he wants to go hit at nine o'clock at night. We do it. You know, sure. if Sportsplex is open, we go and do it. If there, we find some cages, we go and do it. So, sure. Yeah. When I was left, my next door neighbors, they're three boys and they are two boys and a girl. And they like, I swear to God, it's like the second it gets dark, they go play. It's like 10 o'clock at night. They're other, I hear the backboard. Boom. I'm like, this kid's either going to be Kobe or like just break his leg. Try like he's out there every night. So it's like, it always strikes at random times. Nice to have that at home. You can just to get some hacks in if you need to. Yeah. You know, it kind of happened, you know, it's kind of weird. I'm, um, our building so full all the time, especially this time of year, you almost can't even use my own facility very often. Uh, so we had, I got like a, I bought a net and hung it from the ceiling and I can roll up and roll down. And we just got a little piece of turf out there and he, you know, do soft toss and whatever. And, but it's, I think it's actually paid dividends because we can just do it real quick. Even if it's like 15 minutes, it's such a big deal. You go hit a bit bucket of baseballs yeah. you know, every day. You're going to get a little better. Sure. You know? yeah. well, what's been the most rewarding thing is seeing him progress and, and enjoy the sport that you've also loved so much your whole life rather than, doing something like that. You said your daughters, it's a completely new experience. What's been that enjoyment for you seeing him take up something that you loved so much too? Um, I think just his passion with it, you know, just like how much he talks about it. He literally wears sticks, baseball stuff every single day. I get drives, it drives us crazy. He like wears the same three hoodies to school. Um, so th- to, for him to, for him to think it's that like that big of a deal to wear that stuff every day is weird as that sounds. You know, I just think, I, I think that's, I, I, I know. I just think that, I think it's really, I think it's really cool. You know, that, that he's that that passionate about it. literally that's only only thing he wears is sticks baseball clothes every single day. I don't even like sometimes double his shorts or sometimes you have a sticks baseball t shirt underneath his hoodie. Like sure. <laughs> so you know so, so for him to him to feel that way about about that sport and then you know he's always got a baseball in his hand around the house or um he'll you know go grab the glove unless he's like hey let's you know we'll squat back it's nice out or whatever and sometimes I'm not even, I don't even ask it's you know it's him. So for so I, I, I feel good as a as a as a parent that he's he's latched onto it that much too. Sure. So, That's really cool to hear. Yeah. I know we have a year and a half old son and a one month old daughter uh, at home. So it's like, I always like asking these things. Cause it's like, think those things are going to sneak up really quick of like youth, youth clubs and dance and swim or whatever the heck they're into. So they I, do. and I, my wife and I are like, we like watching football or basketball, but I'm like, I also don't want to like force our kids to play that. Cause we want to actually for sure enjoy watching every single game. So, you know, um, I think, I think I was, I don't know if we were lucky or what, but we could feel like you could see pretty quick in our kids, what they were into or not. Our middle one, Brooklyn gymnastics, it was just over. Like she was, she told us in, at, at some soccer game, she's like, this is my last soccer game. We were like, Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she was like six. You know? Sure. <laughs> She's like, this is it for me. I'm done. Yeah. And I, we were like, okay. And I was eight, maybe. I don't know. Sure. And she ended up scoring like two goals that game. We were like, you sure you want to quit? And she's like, yep, I'm done. I was like, all right. Well, I guess that's that. Nice. You know? Yeah. Nice. And you could tell with my oldest with, with uh softball, that wasn't going to be a thing. And then, um, so yeah, it's uh sometimes you can tell pretty quick and what they're going to be into or not. So throw them all of it and sure. then just see, see where they pop out. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And I know my, so my senior year of high school, I, I, I was always doing three sports. So I did basketball, baseball, and football. And then my senior year, I didn't do basketball and I ran track instead because I got bored in the winter. I was like, I'm not used to having a six month off season. Like I'm getting itchy. Like I got to do yeah. something. So then I picked up track. It's like, you can find aspects of something that you like, but sometimes you do something. You're like, I don't want to do this anymore. You can kind mm-hmm. of pick and choose what you want to do. So it's yep. always fun. Call it quits early. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Awesome. So let's get into the lightning round. This is uh, some quick questions just to break it up here in the middle. Um, one word answers. If you want, we can, if there's a story, we can talk about a story. There's really no rules. You can do whatever you want. So, sure. um, if you could only watch one sport for the rest of your life, which sport would you watch? No, oh, I mean, obviously baseball. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What, what level like pro, uh, I like youth, college college. Okay. Yeah. Specific team you like to watch? No, from? I don't even have a pro team. I like it's, it's, I like watching like, my wife thinks I'm so weird with that where, you know, she's really into Iowa. She danced at Iowa. So she's like, Let's go Iowa. Sure. I could really care less. Like, 
<laughs> sure. But I like watching the football games. I like, you know, I like watching the players. And that's the way it is for sports for me, too, to where I just don't have a pro team. I don't have a college team. I just, I like watching good, you know, like good baseball. And I'm good. Love so, it. Love yeah. it. That's great. Um, favorite uh, childhood sports memory. Does something jump out at you as like a getting carried off the field, hit a dinger to win the game? Any Any big thing that was like a stick out memory for you as a child with your sporting career? Man, I don't know. That's you know, oddly oddly enough, I think it's like not so much maybe the good things that could have happened in a game. Of just like I think it it kind of comes back to you know all the like all the friendships I have and some of the you know I texted a guy the other day because I saw uh, a funny picture or just a picture of him giving a speech on LinkedIn. So I screenshotted it and I sent it to like eight buddies and him. And I was like, Oh, I didn't know you were doing public speaking now in, in corporate settings or whatever. And these like, it just lit up and we hadn't talked to each other in 10 years, you sure. know, and guy, now, guy and, friendships were like that. Yeah. Girls are like uh, a lot more high maintenance to keep a friendship alive. You can forget this dude for 20 years. You're like, you look like an idiot. You're like, I love this guy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's probably the big one. That's probably the big one for me is just you know, all the relationships and the people I've met over the years through it is just, so it's really not like one, like super memory that I'm like, oh man, this is the one, you know, but car trips with my parents going to places, you know, hotel stays as a kid, um, bus trips in college going to, we went, you know, Kirkwood, we drove down to Florida and, you know, 24 guys in a bus is a, super fun. Um, Warburg, same thing, went down to Florida, 24 guys in a bus, really fun, you know, and just like all those yeah, just, just everything. Sure. So, no, I love that. Yeah. Um, let's see. A random one I had here. Which leg do you put in your pants in the morning first, left or right? I think I'm a right leg guy. Okay. No, probably not. Probably left because I, I'm a right leg. Yeah. People always right say, dominant. we put our pants on the same way. I'm like, do we? I don't know. Who, who puts your pants on <laughs> yes, left or right leg first? Yeah. Um, most famous person or well-known person that you have in your contact list on your cell phone. You mentioned – You've had dinner with some of these really high level executives, maybe like a sports person. Um, anybody in your contacts list that you think would be the most famous person you have? I don't know. I don't know if I really know any famous people, to be honest. You know, uh, I seriously I can't even think of one. Sure. Alternatively, yeah. who's like the most high profile person you've had uh, sit down dinner with for like naming rights for a, a field or for a facility or anything like that? Like big name people that you would recognize off the bat? Um. I'd say I'd say probably like uh, Reynolds Kramer with with Fairway probably be probably the one he's been um, yeah he's a cool dude yeah he is when yeah. I when I worked at yeah. um, my agency before I did my business full time we shot a lot of commercials with him so we always laugh because he'd show up in a different car every time so we're yeah. like what car does he bring in today so yeah um, he, we he had, does, we yeah. had a makeup person for his head too because his head would shine a lot because he doesn't have any hair so we'd <laughs> have this person there just to powder his head <laughs> he's a cool dude he is he is we had dinner at his house um, just just like a month or two ago because. Um, you know, because the naming rights thing, and but it was a, uh, it was it was cool to like see him and you know talk to him in that setting outside of like you know true true business stuff. It's good to get to know people like that. Sure, so. sure, I love it. Um, favorite drink after a long day? Uh, probably uh, Templeton Rye. Okay, yeah, nice. <laughs> Just is probably my favorite. Yeah. Neat on the rocks. Do you neat. make it with the mix? Yeah, on or? the rocks usually. Okay, okay, yeah. nice, nice. Yep. That's all my lightning round questions. Thanks. For, you, nice. you got to keep you on their toes. You never you know do. what's yeah. going to come. You do. Um, we, we mentioned this earlier, jumping back in here, you'd said like well, quite a few big name people have come through or made it to the, to the league in like different areas of business or different areas of sport. Who's like some of those bigger name athletes or teams that they ended up playing for that have come through, whether it's like the sticks program, the football side, um, other types of stuff like that. Oh, let's see. Um, we've been, the ones, the ones I know the most are on, on baseball, you know, that's just the, just the, the side I deal with probably the most. Um, but you know, we've had, we've had quite a bit, like going back, we have like, you know, Jeremy Helkson trained, you know, trained at Sportsplex, um, quite a bit, not really, but not really like before that cause it didn't exist, but, and you know, when he was playing, he was there, he was there quite a bit. Um, and then John Musser, he got, um, or was he got drafted by the Phillies out of high school? Um, Zach Apola. He got drafted out. He got drafted by the Phillies out of South Dakota State. Oh, nice! Um, but he trained. He was a Dowling kid. He trained at Sportsplex for quite a while. Sure. Um, I did all his like strength training and stuff. Um, who else is there? Jake Yasnich, which is Pat's son. He played at Iowa. He was a shortstop at Iowa for three years, and they got drafted by the Angels. Oh, in, nice! In like the tenth round. Um, Very so cool. he was around. He played like four years. Uh, some of the newer guys, uh, Carter Baumler is a big one. He's still playing. He's with the Orioles. He was a stick for quite a while. Um, 
and then his brother Trevor will probably get drafted too. He's a he's a Dowling kid. Um, who else is there? Well, I think even too like some of your staff, like Carter, played for the NFL, like yep. for some different stuff. Um, yep. What team? With Vikings, right? He was the Vikings, Bengals, and uh, Panthers. What yeah, who's Panthers? I'm yep, picturing the Panthers uniforms from. Yep, uh, from right. um, I'm trying to think of that. So that's cool. Even yep. even coaches that have had yeah. pro level. I mean, that just speaks to the wanting to be involved. Like I think about other programs, like Cole's kicking camp or some of these other yeah. like things that kind of travel around. It's like you want to have the proof in the pudding. You don't want to just be saying, mm-hmm. "Oh, we we have a good program." It's like we have guys that are helping coach that have been there and done it, and like we can kind of show you the lay, the way to go there. You know? Yeah. Carter's amazing. He's he's uh, him and him and the general manager Russ Fairfield have built that apex air into something something really cool here lately. And I think you're going to probably hear a lot. He'd be cool to get on this actually. Um, but he, I think him and I think they're you're going to start hearing a lot more about them here pretty soon. You know, they've they're they're rocking. They doubled their program from last year. You know, Carter's an amazing not only coach but just like just like organizer, just a leader. You know, and um, that's been that's been pretty cool to see that go because football historically is not something that comes out of schools, you know? So it's been neat to see it in the club setting and it's going to do nothing but enhance the sport for the state. Not, it's not going to compete with high school football like at all. High school football is too cool. Sure. You know? like, sure. But the seven on seven is really neat that's going on. And these kids are getting trained and trained and trained and trained by some good, by really good, really high level people too. Sure. Know? Well, I know even just when we did videos with them, like the, the caliber of athletes coming out is crazy. Like they had mm-hmm. a lineman that would drive an hour and a half each way just to train there every week. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, he's trying to get a scholarship and then he got a scholarship to go play football. It's like, that's the whole goal to get you to that next level. You know, where if you're playing your little D2 or not D2, but two a school, that's like, you might not get a look, but if you get those extra reps, you go to those camps, you do this, the work you could, you could get something out of it. So, yeah. So Jacobson, you know, he played basketball at Iowa state and then he just got, uh, he, he started getting call, like NFL calls to come and, you know, he's a college basketball player. And sure. so, but, uh, Carter, Carter grabbed him and they did like combine training with him. And then he ended up signing with the Colts for you know a couple of years. Mm-hmm. So practice squad stuff, but still, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty amazing, you know? Sure. And it was just cool to him. Cool to have him around too. Sure. So. Yeah. And I know one of my clients who rents out here, they had, um, it's Goldfinch athletics had Josh Lentz on their show. Yeah. And he's he lives in Waukee. He's like former NFL wide receiver. So it's like there's people sprinkled all over the all place. Over. You just kind of got to figure out like where they ended up and what they're up to. So yeah, there's a couple out there right now. Well, Matt Koch, he just um, he, he trains at Sportsplex in D1 every year, you know. And then but he's he he left to go with the Rockies again. He just left a couple like just a few weeks ago, and he's a uh, pitcher for them and uh, right hand pitcher. And then Matt Mullenbach, he was a Waukee kid too, um, and he was actually on that that Field of Dreams game last year. For the uh, when they when they played the minor the, the minor league game out in the out in the uh, yeah out the uh, field of dreams field and so he's been he's been at the complex every day too and um but he just got he got really ended up getting released by the twins this last year but he had um, I'm sure someone will pick him up here before long he's he's pretty good sure so, yeah. yeah and I don't, were you familiar with the Peacock TV show the field of dreams they were filming mm-hmm. that they built that field north of Polk City mm-hmm. I drive by it like every day I'm like what the hell is that so then. Yeah. They just lost the funding apparently on it. And so if you ever have overflow that you need like game field, ask the farmers that own that field. They might might be able to provide a field for you. So, yeah, yeah, that was a weird deal. You know, we, we work pretty closely with Iowa sports turf and stuff because we, we help manage um, Holiday Park down in West Des Moines. So they take care of all those fields down there. And then um, they're also taking care of um, um, the Norwalk complex for us, moving fences, setting bases, making sure things are going well down there. So he told us about that. And we're the, the their president, um, Casey, and we were like, what, you know? And then I go, I, that's the way I go to Ankeny and you can see those, like, you know, see those lights out there off the road. It's pretty, pretty weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> they did that. Just, and dude, it's it was, nice. it was such a like cluster though, because the, the film crew had rented out all the hotels in Ankeny for like oh, yeah. six months. They were booked out. And then all of a sudden they're like, just kidding. So then, like, it just p- pissed everyone off because they're, like, the amount of economic impact, like, the jobs, the yeah. the media attention, you know. I'm like, but I also, at the time, my gym was on that road. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to get to freaking go to my workout because there will be news vans everywhere trying to get footage of what the hell's going on. So yeah. um, I was going to ask also, too, like, as the club sports have built out, what would be the biggest thing that you've seen as the clubs have evolved in the last, like, you said, 13 years since you became a partner in the company? What's been the biggest thing that's, like, evolved in those to not just being like this little program that you could jump in if you're within 10 miles of the building to like people that want to drive, you know, an hour and a half or come there because they know that they can get top notch training and and coaching to get to that next level. 
Um, the answer is everything has changed in it. You know, when, when I was like, when I was playing club ball, it was a dad that put a couple teams together and they do it, you know, and <clears throat> even I think soccer's always been a touch more organized just because there's not as many soccer people out there. But like, I mean, seriously, everything we have apps for development where, um, tons of, tons of tech, the tech is everything in sports right now, figuring out data and how a kid's improving. Um, and then also just how cl- how small the world is now kids are kids can get exposed so much easier by just posting videos on the internet you know so um and then just the over and, and then the just the overall organization of it and the and the people and the people working on it and being able to turn it in turn turn this into maybe a hobby or something you want to do for the community it's actually doing it full time you know full time it takes a ton of work obviously but it is um to be able to to be able to scale it is now probably a reality. So that's exciting. There, there's so much that I think that's gone into that. Um, another piece of that too is, as we, I think we mentioned earlier, like other facilities popping up. What's like the biggest, I would say, like a threat business wise to you guys as you continue to scale? Is it changes in the marketplace? Is it just the local uh, other competitors that come in as you guys, like you said, the land grab, physically, like uh, metaphorically, but also mm-hmm. literally? Like what's kind of the threats to you guys as you scale up? Um, I don't know. I mean, everyone's a competitor to us, but everyone, you know, um, said this the other day, this is probably the biggest one and it's schools like DCG just built an amazing, an amazing performance center there for free. Kids can go train there for free. We're having Brent butcher on tomorrow. He's the athletic director there. So, yeah, I mean, my kids are in DCG schools. That is a great, that is a great facility, great people involved in it over there. You know, it's, um, it's awesome awesome for the athletics, you know, and they're making some good changes too, to where kids can go instead of going to PE, they can go in there and work out. Like it's a great, uh, it's a great thing to do for the the great, don't waste your time playing pickleball and go get better for your sport. Sure. And then it's, uh, uh, but, but you know, that's not even a really a threat either. It's, you know, that's, that enhances the athlete. And then we offer different things other than that too, you know? So, and it's, you know, we've always found with schools able to, uh, like like I like just said, just in in enhance the athlete so that the product they're getting is good from you know that the athlete that they're getting from us is good and we're getting good athletes back from them. Mm-hmm. So and then we're all you know we all look better because of it. Or all of our coaches look better because of it. So. Sure. Well, and even when I was over there last week, and it's like it's not just the Waukee, the Grimes kids. Like I saw North Polk shirts in there. Mm-hmm. I saw some Norwalk kids. Like there's different schools, different people. It's all around. It's like yeah. offering, offering those specific, like sports specific training programs, I think is what sets you guys apart from just having like a huge gym that people could use or weightlifting equipment or whatever. Yeah. And we, you know, we customize things. Like we always, we always, and, um, we always wanted to create, um, we did a lot of one-on-one when I like one-on-one training when I first started. There'd be like private baseball lesson, private training session, but that's expensive, you know, to get somebody's one-on-one time. So we're like, how can we create a program that, you know, for all of our sports really that we have or all the sports we want to get into, how can we create a program that is affordable for families and still get high level training and get, you know, there's only really so many good coaches. I mean, there's good coaches out there, but there's some like really good ones, especially for certain age groups. Like coaching an eight year old is way different than coaching an 18 year old. And there's guys that are good at that. And there's guys that are good at the other, you know, coaching the other side. So we like, we wanted to find a way to create that, create that affordable program and be able to get these good coaches in front of like all of our players. And it takes a lot of conversations. And I think we've been able to do that. And that's probably the main reason why we've been able to grow to the size that we are. Cause we're, cause you know, a coach only has so much time in the day and then you'll burn them out. So you gotta, if, if you want to get a lot of, a lot of kids, good instruction, you gotta be able to get, get them in front of a lot. You know, we gotta be able to figure out how to make their time more efficient. So we've been, I think we've been able to do that. And then through our other stuff we have, we're able to give guys full-time jobs and stuff too, and stay in this and girls too. Like we have, you know, like we have over 130 people on payroll. Like, you know, that's, 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 a, that's a lot of staff. And so. Sure. And that's across like all the brands, all the, yeah. like the apparel business, the locations, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. That's exciting. And that was why we, like, why we kind of um, grabbed Ames, the opportunity in Ames up there was because I told you before, we, we believe in the, you know, the, re- the regional training center and we want to align with, um, um, three T's up there and elite 360 and AIM soccer club and put together cool programs, like, cool, like try to like expand our ideas up there. It's, 
no small task because people already, they're doing it the way they want to do it anyways. They feel like it works, you know, and we're doing it the way we feel like we want it to work, but just, it is different markets. But at the end of the day, we want to be able to train. We want to be able to get, we want to be able to train and um, improve the athletes in, in all the areas we are and not have to drive 45 minutes to do that, you know. Sure. So. Well, it, it, it opens it up to more people, right? If you're in Ames, you don't have to decide like, crap, well, the closest facility is in Waukee. Like mm -hmm. I'd have to drive like an hour each way. Like now it's, oh, it's in town. Like yep. it's 10 minutes away, 15 minutes. Now like take my money. Like <laughs> that, 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 uh, that, uh, barrier is gone now, which is nice. For sure. Well, I mean, like I was, it was, I was just telling a parent this today. I'm like, people think it's a commitment for the kid to do youth sports. Like it's the parents that are committed. I mean, it is a lot of work to be a sports parent, you know? And, um, I remembered, uh, one of our, one of my original clients was Blake Marchant and his brother, Austin Marchant. And they, they came from Indianola four days a week, you know, and they would come up and do an hour or, an hour of catching, pitching, or hitting every day. One they'd hit with Mike Mahoney or hit with me or whatever, and then they'd come work out with me for an hour. Like that is such a massive commitment for for a parent, you know, sure. to do that and then do it for four years. And then he get done with. He was Blake. Blake works for me now. He's worked for us for like ten years, but he was like good. Back. He's a pretty good high school basketball player for Indianola. So then he'd go play basketball and then come up after that. And his dad would go, you know, drive him to you know, like it's mm -hmm. a ton of round trips and a ton of gas money. And yeah. but, but like it's funny talking to him talking to his dad now and he's like you know what's weird is like and there's there's another another guy too by the uh good family called the um, hillmans and tyler hillman and they had like four kids that went through it, three kids that went through our program but he said the same thing that it is it was later on thinking about it he was like it was cool to get an hour and a half with my son every day mm -hmm. on the on the road and he like never thought of it like that before because sure. he was just like oh, i gotta drive to the well, and there's sometimes like I was, I was out there at Sportsplex. There's like three or four parents in their, in their vehicles, just working, mm -hmm. taking business calls or working yep. on a laptop. Like they're taking advantage of that time. So it's, it's an interesting time. Cause like it sucks in that moment. But like you said, like it'll be over like that so fast. And then yeah. your kids are driving themselves. They don't need you anymore. It's like, mm -hmm. just come on, the, you know, come on the weekends and then they graduate. And it's like, well, shit, I, you know, like my grandparents watched every one of my games when I graduated high school and I wasn't going to play in college. They're like, you know, we're happy for you, but like, dude, what are we going to do? Like <laughs> we're, all we did was go to your games. Every season you had something going on, we go watch it. Now we have nothing to do. So yep. it's, it's an interesting thing. It, it might is. be an opportunity for, for another business of your guys is to have like entertainment for the parents while they're there, like a, a spa or something. I don't know, like a, something that they can do while they're waiting to get pr productive use out of that time. Well, that's, that's kind of the idea of having this, you know, one-stop shop somewhere. It's not just for the drop the kid off. You can, you know, mom can go to the spa, go work out, you know, sure. actually be efficient with your time and not just like sit there and twiddle your thumbs or, you know, look at Facebook or something. Like you can go, go work out during while your kids at practice for an hour and a half or, you know, um, go into the restaurant and grab a beer and chit chat with somebody. I sure. don't know, but it is, you know, it's, you, you learn that over the years that the parents are making a lot of the commitment too. So sometimes they want to go to a, go to a certain spot because of that. Or like, Oh, I don't want to go to that facility because of this, you mm -hmm. know? So, yeah. And it's interesting too. Like uh, we're in Polk city and the, I went out to the high school during caucus night. Cause that was my polling location. I'd never been out there before. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking around, I'm like, this is like kind of nice. Like I haven't been out here before, but it's interesting to see how that landscape will change, whether it's like the kids are into stuff that they'll have to do in Ankeny or they can go to Ames or go to Des Moines. Like mm -hmm. it'll be so different to see kind of how that all plays out. So that's a piece of be. it. Um, one of the last questions I want to ask was we kind of touched on this before, but like, what's the growth plan for the business? Like pie in the sky. Do you guys have like a vision for what this would be? Is it regional? Is it national? Like what's kind of the growth plan for all the stuff with Sportsman Solutions, with Sportsbooks West, all that stuff. I was kind of giving away all my secrets, isn't it, when you ask me that? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> kind of giving, me, giving away all the stuff that we want to do. Um, well, with Sportsman Solutions, um, we're going to continue on the, on the path of uh, developing uh, sponsorships. Um, we want to be able to develop more facilities for cities, for private owners, whatever, helping, helping anybody who's, who's looking to do it. We're turning that company pretty, we're trying to get it pretty turnkey to where we can come in and help you build it or come in and see if it'll be, see if it's worth it, you know, write a study, see if it's worth it. Um, take it to development phase, get it designed, build it, and then run it for them. You know, that would be, that would be the goal for them. You know, um, sure. that'd be goal for goal for sportsmen, anything and everything in between. So, um, just can you that, can you that on a, on a nationwide, you know, thing that's that's probably the path that's probably the path of that i don't know where, which way i'll go at some point but um i'm, I'm kind of my time split between them both um, i spent a lot of time on both of them so but then 
Sportsplex is a little bit a little bit more complicated, um, and we have um, a long term plan that I don't know how comfortable I am I am really sharing, you know. But it is it is to continue continue on the path we are um, growing clubs in different areas, getting on this regional training uh, uh, regional training center model, um, and we'll do that through good partnerships, acquisitions, um, building new complexes, finding ways to finding and finding ways to help them do it. And both those companies, Sportsman and Sportsplex, complement each other. And then our, our uh, strategic partnerships along the way that we're picking up is, um, I, I don't, I don't know if there's really anybody out there better right now with some of the partners that we have, you know, along alongside of us and our like, our staff's just phenomenal sure. uh, across the board, you know, all the way down, all the way down to our maintenance guy, he's just the man, you know. So and everybody, everybody in between there. So that's great. Yeah. Well, we're looking for sponsorship on the podcast. If you guys need a naming rights, we'll put your logo right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the old, you know, reverse card on you guys um, yeah, you for that. that. So that's, yeah. that's another piece of it. The last question I wanted to ask you, I know, thank you for coming in and everything today. Last question I wanted to ask you was what would be the biggest advice that you would give young Jake when he first was an intern starting out with this business? If you could give all the knowledge and things you've picked up, what's, what's one piece of advice you would give your younger self? It's good. Another, yeah, that's another good question, but, um, uh, you know, it's kind of the cliche thing to say, but it is just like, keep working, keep putting, keep putting your head down. Don't be, um, don't be, uh, afraid to let things kind of play out on their own. Like sometimes if you sometimes force in things, you might not be ready for, um, I'm learning now that big business takes time or just business takes time in general. And sometimes there's a reason for that. Cause you kind of like, you're like massaging relationships, seeing if you guys want to do the old dating before you get married thing, seeing if you guys seen, you know, two businesses do want to do something together. And I think younger Jake was like looking to, looking to move to, looking to move quick. And, but, and then that probably led to, you know, some mistakes and things like that too. But, um, I'd probably be the biggest one, just, you know, keep it on one, just, you got to work hard, like period. Like I work all the time, probably too much. You know, this is a business owner. It's just, you can't shut it off. You know, I was up at three 30 in the morning working for no reason. I just like woke up with ideas mm -hmm. and I was just went, you know, yep. and I'm sure you do that. I talked to another guy today who's a business owner. He did the same thing. You know, he was up at, he said he was up at four, just couldn't, couldn't help it. He's had to go. And I think, you know, that's, uh, um, I, I, I can see this in you that you're, you know, um, you want to, you, you're a high achiever. You want to, you want to be really good. You want to be really good at what you do and put out a good product. And I feel like, um, that's, that's what, uh, not that we didn't put, I didn't, young Jake didn't put out good products, but, um, just like appreciating the process along the way. Like each step is something, is something cool. You know, like I, when, when I first came on as an owner, it was my goal to make the brand cooler. Like I just, I was like, our logo sucks or, you know, like, <laughs> I was like, we got to make our websites awful. So I like made those guys. I'm like, Hey, one, we're going to clean up, clean up the building a ton. It was filthy all the time. I was like, building's going to be clean as much as possible. And we're going to make it cool. Like sure. the brand's going to be really cool. All of our brands are going to be cool no matter what we have. So, and that was, I think that that was a process. It took me a lot of time, maybe took away from other things that I was doing, but I felt like it was a step that, you know, I needed to take. So. Sure. That's great advice. I think it's, it's interesting too looking back because everyone, like you said, you'll make your blunders, but learning things along the way. Do you think young Jake would have been, surprised that you're at the position you are now, like starting as an intern, like I'm going to own this place as a partner one day. Like would th that thought even cross your mind when you were young? Never did. I always knew I, I, I was kind of, I never really, I wasn't great with like, uh, authority my whole life really. So I always, I always kind of knew I'd probably work for myself someday, but I didn't know I would have never guessed it'd be probably in this capacity and having, having this many, having this much staff and this many people, you know, um, on board with us and what we're doing, you know, and that's, that's kind of a, um, don't mean to like go off topic here, but this is like a, um, I loved coaching so much. Like coaching kids is like, so it is, it is one of the most rewarding things possible. You know, like seeing a kid figure it out is just outstanding. And so, going into leadership and management, like it was a big step for me to be able to like, I'm like, Hey, I'm 27, like 26. Like these guys are older than me, you know? And they're like, well, dude, like my, my partner's like, well, you gotta, you know, gotta get over it. <laughs> sure. you know, he's gotta get over it. And then now getting out of coaching and going into managing people 
it's so fun to see. It's like almost like I'm a coach in that way to where they're like coming to me with not life, not life problems, but they're coming to me with problems or like, Hey, I want to get into this. How do I get into it? And it's fun to like kind of coach them, coach them through that and, and lead them through it, you know, to where I'm, I sit in a unique spot to where I was also an employee for a lot of years there. And then I became a partner. So they're like, I, I, I see both sides of the coin. I can see, I can see working for, you know, quote unquote, the man, but then also um, being in a spot where like, Hey, I got to keep the business running, you know, so I can keep paying you, you know? Sure. So, and it's a, uh, but for me, that's what I've enjoyed most about getting into management and getting into leadership is just helping people um, find, find their passions within our company. And some people are changing departments constantly doing different stuff. And it's uh, but it is, it is really like, it's, it is, it is coaching, you know, not maybe it's more life coaching or whatever. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but it's, it's fun to sit down and hear what my, hear what staff's doing. Hey, I'm going to have a kid, just bought a new house. What do you think I should do? You know, do you think I should do a townhome? Think I should do a condo thing? You know, like, what do you think I should do? And, I, and it's, it's fun to, fun to have those combos and then see those guys grow professionally and those girls grow professionally, you know, and dropping them an idea at four in the morning and being like, don't answer this when you get it, but we're going to talk about this tomorrow. I think, but I think we're onto something here, you know, and they do the same thing to me. I'll get it from them. So, and that's, that's what, that's what sets us apart as an organization is, is, is that and our, and our, and our, and our people. And, um, and for me, like, I enjoy it. I enjoy it so much that, um, probably drives my wife crazy because I'm, we're, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about it, constantly working on it. And she's now a part of our business too. She does get, make sure our marketing gets out, helps us out with HR, gets everybody onboarded, probably something she never thought she'd be doing, but, um, we needed somebody organized to be able to do it. And so I was like, Hey, you want to take this on? And she's, uh, she stayed home with our kids for, you know, for a while and did some other stuff too, but dumping her into that, she's cleaned up a ton of stuff. For us in there. Sure. You're <laughs> yeah. probably at work too much and you're like, just come work with me. So then we're together all the time. And then yeah. I don't have to feel like I'm missing out on anything at home. I will all be here all the time. The kids <laughs> yeah. will play sports all day. We'll be working here all day. We'll never leave. It'll be great. That's right. And you know, that's what our mornings consist. I really drop the kids off at school and then we're just like, you know, BS for an hour and a half or, or BS for an hour or whatever. And then some work stuff in there and just like, well, Hey, what do we do? Blah, blah, blah. But that is, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been nice having around with that. We thought I wouldn't want it because I'm like, Hey, let's just figure out a way to separate it. So we're not talking about it at dinner, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, uh, it's, it's inevitable. I'll talk to her about it anyway. So sure. it's, nice. It's, it's nice to have her involved now. Sure. Absolutely. No, I think it's, yeah. it's super cool to see in the progression, man. And like hearing the story of like coming from where, like your, your roots and how you got to where you are. Cause it's, it's so interesting to see how the program's grown, even just in the short time that I've known you and, and known the, mm -hmm. the program and just kind of seen it blossom. It's, it's been really cool to see the next, you know, 10 years to see where it ends up, you know, a decade from now. So, well, thanks. You know, I've been, I've been following along with your story too, quite a bit. So it's, it's neat to see you where you're at when if we first kind of caught you shooting your own thing out at, out of D one, you know, to where you're at now and you got your own place and you know doing podcasts and just, you know, creating a lot of attention and the videos you're putting out now are a ton better than they were years ago too, you know? So, so for me, it was, um, cool to come here with you and do this. I don't, this isn't something I do. I don't, you know, not that I don't enjoy it. I may enjoy it more after this, but, uh, it's a, uh, I don't, I don't normally like to talk about myself. Sure. Sure. <laughs> well, thanks for stepping outside of your comfort zone. And, uh, I think it's, it's, it's always fun. Cause it's like, I just love hearing people's stories of again, yeah. where they come from, what makes them them. And, uh, just hearing all the cool stuff you're doing. Cause obviously there's some things you can't talk about, but I'm, I'm appreciate that you came to, to talk about the things you could talk about today. So, yeah. well, and you know, it's funny. I felt like we kind of started off cause I'm the same way as you. I like to, I like to hear what people are doing and I, cause I'm like genuinely curious, like how you're doing it, what you're doing, is, is it working or, and then like genuinely happy for you that when things are going well, you know? Sure. So like, I felt like I kind of started off interviewing you. Like, how did you get this place? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I sure. Like, I was like, hold on, I gotta, I gotta pump the brakes here so we can interview me first. Sure. You know? <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's a, it's a process. And I, I'm kind of the weirdo. Like when I go and I always say the examples, if I go to bowling alley, my, I walk in and I'm like, how many lanes do they have? Like, what are they charging for? Like how much money are they putting through this place? Like, how could they grow? What are they doing? Like my mind works in that business capacity. Yeah. So when I talk to someone like you, I'm always just curious, like, okay, like what programs can you run? Like, what is there a cap rate you can do for your revenue? Like what other areas could you do? Like my mind's always thinking like that. I can't yeah. shut it off. So it's like, yeah. I always like learning from other industries because there's so many things you can learn and take away from and evolve to, to make yourself better or think like, Oh, this other industry is doing this. Why don't I apply it to my business or whatever? Mm -hmm. It's always interesting to learn that stuff. So, well, and, um, I think it's comes from like some of that you're talking about is like creativity, you know, too. And just like genuinely curious on like how the heck does a bowling alley cash flow? 
you know, when no one's here most of the day, <laughs> like how do they sure. do it? And it's then, a front for the mob, bro. <laughs> yeah, probably just like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, so but that's, that's a sign for you is like, you're, you're, you know, you're entrepreneurial. Do you want to try this? Do you know, should I do this? Do I want to get into this Avenue? And, you know, uh, and I, you know, I, I think what you've done too is, is pretty sweet. So sure. I'm excited to see where you're, see where, I might, I might flip the switch here at some point. I'll interview you here someday. Sure. We'll, we'll <laughs> so, I'll come on your guys' podcast. Your so we can talk yeah, about that. Yeah, That'll be idea. fun. Cool, that's man. That's a good idea. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Um, where can people find more about you connect on LinkedIn or like learn more about what you guys offer? Um, probably our, uh, probably two websites, um, sportsplexwest.com is our main one. You can find pretty much anything we do through that. That's our, that's what I call our catalog. Um, and then sportsman solutions.com is our, um, is, is our, um, management company's website. That's, you can see, that's our catalog. See everything that we offer on there too. So sure. Well, thanks Jake for coming in so much. Appreciate it. Um, if you guys have made it this far, you guys know what to do. Subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, leave us a five-star review if you're listening on Apple iTunes. My name is Ryan Snod at Rhymes Thod. We'll catch you in the next episode. Peace. Thank you so much for watching yet another episode of the Rhymes of the Odd podcast. We really do appreciate your support. If you could give us a five-star review on Apple iTunes, that makes a world of difference, guys. Also, if you're tuning in on YouTube or Spotify, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss another episode and check us out on social media. Also, if you'd like to inquire more about our services here at Snod Media Group or learn about doing your own podcast for your own business, you can find us at snodmedia.com. We'll see you in the next episode. Peace.